Okay, let's go ahead and uh, find any critical number. So the critical numbers, when you're looking for them, they're dependent on the derivative. And it's going to be either case um, from when we go to solve them. So the first thing we need is the derivative of your, your function. Which is why we learned all of those derivative rules, because now you have to know how to find the derivative to get other stuff. So the derivative of this, 4x to the third, minus 8x. So once you get your derivative, we're going to set it equal to 0. And you're going to do two things. You're going to figure out where the derivative is 0 or where it's possibly undefined. Now they both don't have to occur. Like you might just find out where the derivative is undefined or you might just find out where the derivative is 0. But sometimes it's both of, uh, happening at once. So with this one, there's nothing that makes it undefined. Like you don't have a fraction involved. Um, so there's nothing that's going to make this case. So it's just for where it equals zero. So just pull out a 4x. So x is going to equal zero and plus or minus the square root of two. And those would be your critical numbers. Okay, part B. Same thing, get the derivative, 3x squared, set it equal to 0, and x is going to equal 0. All right, simple enough until we get to part C. Uh-oh, now you got to use the quotient rule. Oh, dear. All right, well, let's just go through it. Okay, derivative of the top is 4 times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, times the top. That wasn't too bad. All over the denominator squared. So let's go ahead and simplify this out. So if you multiplied it, combined like terms, we end up with 4 minus 4x squared. And the denominator stays the same. Okay, so here's where it gets a little interesting. If your derivative has a fraction with the variables down there, you might have a case where the derivative is undefined. So in instances like this, you're figuring out, okay, well, what makes the top equal to zero? Because that would give you this case. And then you would figure out what makes the denominator equal to zero, because that would give you this one. Well, for the denominator, x squared plus 1, that's never ever going to equal 0. So the denominator is not going to yield a solution. It's just going to be the top. So you're really just solving the top equal to 0, and that's it. So x would be plus or minus 1. Okay, let's move on to example two. Find the value of the derivative at each extrema. So the book has you do it one way, but we're going to kind of cheat because we're going to um, use the fact that they told us that these things were extrema. So if you look at the graph here, like on part A, uh, that is a relative max. And the theorem says, hey, if you have a relative max, you've got a critical number, which means the derivative is either zero or undefined. So f prime of that same x value, the zero, it's either zero or undefined. So how do you determine which one it is? Well, again, what is a derivative? It's the slope of the tangent line. So if you drew a tangent line, uh, it's probably horizontal. And the slope of any horizontal line is 0. So for this guy down here, that's a relative min. So relative maxes occur like at the top of a hill. 
and the relative mins occur at the bottom of a valley. I don't think we've stated that yet, but um, there you go. So it's a relative min, so you've got another critical number at that same x value, and you've got another horizontal tangent line, which means the derivative is zero. What the book wants you to do is they want you to find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then solve for x. Well, we already know they're extrema. They told us that, so let's just use it. Okay, part B, same thing. Uh, this point up here, yeah, that's a relative max with a horizontal tangent line. So f prime of a negative two-thirds is going to equal zero. Okay, now this point right here, it's not a relative max and it's not a relative min. It's not at the top of a hill, nor is it at the bottom of any uh, valley. But we could still get a tangent line going. And if you look at it, the tangent line is really vertical. So f prime of negative one does not exist. It's undefined. Okay, now part C, that's a relative max, but it's a little bit different. We know it's a critical number, however, this is a sharp point, and derivatives do not exist on sharp points. So it's a relative max, but in this time, instead of the derivative being zero, now the derivative is undefined. Uh, because it's sharp. All right, let's go ahead and stop the video here. And in the next one, we'll actually find uh, those absolute extrema.